Good morning and welcome to St. Clement's Memorial Episcopal Church located in St. Paul, Minnesota. My name is Joy Paris. I'm the priest here at St. Clement's and it is a gift to worship with all of you this morning. As we continue through our service today, a couple of quick notes. Please know we are recording the service so that it can be posted later on YouTube for those who are unable to be with us this morning. So if you want to avoid the risk of possibly appearing in that worship video, you can simply just keep off your video. Um, it's unlikely given the setup we have for recording, but if it makes you more comfortable, please feel free to simply turn off your video. Also, please stay muted throughout the service, except for those places where it indicates otherwise. It'll be very clear. We have congregants who are speaking on behalf of all of us, so pray along and speak along with them, but do so while muted. Today, parishioners Ron Brand and Gail Lundeen Brand will represent our entire community as the voices of the people. So if you are new to St. Clement's visiting or just need a reminder of who we are, let's begin with a statement of what we value as a community. Ron and Gail, you'll definitely want to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> well, we... You're unmuted, okay. Okay, here we go. This is God's table. All are welcome, all are needed. Our presence, our stories, our true selves are welcome here. We see each other with a grateful and open heart. Together we're the body of Christ. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now, now and, and forever. forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's Gloria is S280 as found in your hymnal and also as it will appear on the screen in front of you. For some reason, our sound is not working. Just one moment, I'll check to see. I did check the checkbox, but the player was muted. So give me half a second and we'll be back in business. Da 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 da. <laughs> I love these opportunities for us to practice grace with each other and with technology. Hang on. For some reason, the player is muting itself, and I don't know why it's doing that. There it is. Okay. Let us pretend that this is now working and we'll continue from here, everyone. <clears throat> My apologies. God damn it. it is not working. So that said, why don't we go ahead and play the video um, without sound? And I invite folks to sing along at home. The other additional trouble is the unmute button is right under a hover panel that appears whenever I put my mouse there. So I can't click on it. Oh, well, here we go. We'll all sing the Gloria together in our homes. Thank you. 
Hey, Mark. Yes. Your muttering's audible. Okay, I'm sorry. It's That's okay. <laughs> I know it's frustrating. So let's go ahead and continue with the collect of the day. Oh, I need to share my screen. Sorry about that. That's okay. Nothing like technology to throw you. So let's take just a moment to breathe and step back into the worshiping space. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Peace indeed to all of us in all of our places. Peace to those near and far. Peace and glory to the God who has called us here. God be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 The first, first lesson today is read by Mikan. From Jonah 3, 1 through 5 and verse 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and everyone great and small put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways. God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. The Psalm for this morning is Psalm 62, verses uh, 6. 14. We'll read it responsively. For God alone, my soul in silence waits. Truly, my hope is in Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. And God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in Him always, O people. Pour your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in extortion, in robbery take no empty pride. The wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard it, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. Reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it, for the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
Our sequence hymn today is hymn number 440, led by choral fellow Rachel Farhi. We'll be singing verses one and two. God of mercy, God of grace, show the brightness of thy face. Shine upon us, Savior, shine. Fill thy church with light divine. And thy saving help extend unto earth's remotest end. Let thy people praise thee, Lord, be thy own. Live or don't let the nation shout and sing glory to this Savior King. Let all be below above, one in joy and light and love. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord Christ. <clears throat> Lord, open my lips so that my mouth may proclaim your praise. Amen. This is a story of second chances, of turning around, not before it's too late, but after the deed is done. It's a story about us. It's a story about God's call to us, not to perfect people in no need of redemption, but to imperfect ones, imperfect people who have screwed up, who have screwed up time and time again, until now, until today. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, the evil done on our behalf. When we say those words, we do so collectively. We say them together, but it is the individual mouth of the confessor that puts breath into air and forms a public witness. Breath into air. Like the breath upon the water, new life born of a commitment to repentance. Because this is a story of second chances. This is a story of opportunity and invitation. The story of Jonah, who dwelled in the darkness of a whale, a symbolic Leviathan, mythic in nature with the power to engulf one of us, yet created and subject to the creator. Jonah, who was unwilling to intervene on behalf of Nineveh, but who, 
in the storm, spoke up as a willing sacrifice on behalf of those who sailed the ship. The ship that he had hoped would allow him to flee from God's call. A ship taking him so far and yet so close to God because he had sought a distance that God alone could span, being cast into a symbolic death, a death that found its meaning within the context of God's call. Jonah's new life found its meaning in the unrelenting presence of the divine, of God, who calls again and again, God, who calls us as partners, collaborators, and co-creators in the redemption and salvation of God's people. God partners with Jonah. God partners with us, calling us to intervene on behalf of God's people. God's people, our siblings and friends, our neighbors and strangers, our children and our elders. And so at last, but just in time, Jonah speaks. It was not too late. It is never too late to repent, to turn back, to say unto God, we repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done and the evil done on our behalf. It is never too late to turn, to turn from death and into new life. Now, if we were a tradition that invited altar calls, this would be the time. I would invite you to consider God's call to you and to present yourself at the altar as an offering, to present yourselves vulnerable unto the Lord and to commit publicly to a new life. And if we were in person, together in the pews, you'd be squirming wondering if I might just do that, might just ask for your personal public witness. You'd wonder, will she dare? Do I? Do I dare? You might be casting your eyes around nervously, wondering if, if some neighbor would make a choice that would compel you to follow to follow, to follow despite your own nervousness, despite your own hesitations, despite your own fear, to follow and make a public commitment from which there will be no turning back. You would be changed. You would be seen differently. Seen as one so bold as to do the unexpected, something out of line. People would be nervous around you. What will they do next? Folks would talk. They'd talk about you and about that time when you stumbled forward towards the altar and fell upon your knees, head bowed, genuflecting without care for the hardness of the tile beneath your knees. Genuflecting while everyone stared and wondered, should I join in? Should my knees bend? Should my hand raise? And if I do, what will happen next? In May of 2019, I was invited to such an altar call. I stood with 1,500 preachers, mostly Lutherans, at the Festival of Homiletics in Minneapolis. And it was there where the Reverend William Barber issued an invitation, an invitation to the gathered preachers to come forward to the altar and publicly commit ourselves to witness in the public square for God's justice and love, to come forward to the altar as an offering of ourselves to the work of God in the world, to come forward to the altar 
to recommit ourselves to the call we had accepted in our baptism and to set our souls to the work of God's mercy. I cast about nervously, stay or go. I hesitated, is this being filmed? Do I take my backpack with me? Well, he's going, they're going. Should I go too? What's the right answer? Yes or no? I was unsure because I wanted to do the right thing. Because what would it say about me if I stayed in my chair? What would it say about me if I join in the journey towards the altar? Am I willing to go public? Am I willing to publicly stay behind? What will this mean? What will this mean for me? There is no halfway in responding to such a call. A choice has to be made. And for those of us who have been content in a halfway life, it's a hard choice with which to be faced. But the truth of the matter is that a half lived life won't get us anywhere and a choice must be made. We can't continue to hang out in the belly of the whale. Eventually, we must choose a way. Stay or go. Stay or follow. A way between life and death, a choice between creation and destruction, a choice between the evil and the good, a choice to follow Christ or to turn away, a choice to accept the risk and go or stay put and stay safe. Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote in his book, The Cost of Discipleship, the followers of Christ have been called to peace and they must not only have peace, but also make it. And to that end, they renounce all violence and tumult. In the cause of Christ, nothing is to be gained by such methods. His disciples keep the peace by choosing to endure suffering themselves rather than inflict it on others. Jonah chose to be cast overboard rather than see the sailors destroyed. To endure suffering rather than to inflict it on others. That is the unimaginable truth, isn't it? that Christ would rather endure suffering than inflict it on others, that God, that God would accept the pain of the cross and our betrayal, and even then, even then forgive. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul. To suffer, rather than to inflict suffering upon another. It strikes me that this idea, that of accepting suffering in order to avoid harming another is wildly countercultural. It would have been countercultural then and it is most certainly countercultural now. Countercultural because suffering is so often understood to be a logical or natural consequence of some moral ineptitude. When we see suffering in the world, we tend to cast about for blame, as if the sick, the poor, and the oppressed are somehow at fault for their affliction. We blame the poor for being poor. We shame the hungry for being hungry. We diagnose the sick with moral failings. They brought it on themselves. We sigh and shake our heads. They brought it on themselves. And then we turn and walk away 
because they have been suitably punished. Self-righteousness and vindictiveness in the face of need. It is to America's shame. Not all that long ago, a man posted a play-by-play on social media of his child asking for food. Food that he refused to give until the child figured out on her own how to work a can opener. He offered no support or guidance. He did not teach his child how to use a can opener. Instead, he publicly shamed his child for their hunger and for their need. Being dad, as he became known on Twitter, did not see fault in his actions, and he was put to task. Who, when their child asks for a piece of bread, would give them a snake instead, one said. But how is that any different from what we as a country do when we refuse to create structures that will provide the kind of support that the most vulnerable people in our communities need in order to open their own metaphorical can of beans? Shame instead of help, dismissal instead of teaching, a snake instead of bread. I can see why Bean Dad thought his approach was perfectly acceptable. Meanwhile, here we are in the churches, arguing about whether or not it's too political to say that Black Lives Matter or that everyone should have access to quality healthcare, whether or not it's too political to advocate for safe and affordable childcare, whether or not it's too political to say that yes, there needs to be police reform and yes, we need to eliminate gun violence. Is it too political to follow Christ? Is it too political to observe the 10 commandments? Is it too political to love your neighbor as yourself? Clearly, I have some feelings about this. I think carefully before I speak, I reflect deeply on what I hear. My goal is never to offend and it is certainly not to shame. Instead, my goal is to point to the gospel and ask the question, are we doing that? Are we following Christ's teachings? Are we sharing the good news? Are we? Are we honoring the dignity of every human being? Are we seeking and serving Christ in all persons? Are we? Shh. Before you answer that, before you go down some shame spiral of inadequacy, know that I see you. I see you striving to be good people in this world. I see you trying so hard to do what Christ would have you do. I see you showing up even when it's uncomfortable. I see you wanting to do the right thing, even when none of us are quite sure what the right thing is. Left, right, in between. I see how you care for each other. I see how you yearn to be cared for. You confess, you are absolved. You try again, and here we are. Here we are. At last, but none too soon. Too late, but just in time. Here we are. And in just a few moments, our service will continue with an altar call. An Episcopalian, heavy on the words, steeped in tradition, stay in place kind of altar call. The renewal of our baptismal vows. 
We have been using these vows since the feast of the baptism of Christ as a reminder of what we have committed ourselves to as a way of publicly answering God's call to us as a means of setting ourselves back upon the way of love, the way of Christ, a way that has the power to transform the world entire if we are willing to take the risk of following. So how about it, dear ones? Shall we try again? Our service continues with the renewal of our baptismal vows. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. I do. do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He had descended to the dead. On the third day, he arose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated, seated at the right, right hand of the Father. He, he will, will come, come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy, Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers. I will, I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will, I will with God's, God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I, I will, will with God's, God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's, with God's help. May almighty God, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, Keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us hear the call of scripture to the mission of all the baptized. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who has reconciled us through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation that is in Christ. God reconciled the world. Come, O Lord, and set us free. Give your people peace. Holy and life-giving God, send your reconciling spirit to visit us. Do your work among your people, crumbling the barriers that divide us, stemming the violence that pervades our country and our world, bringing an end to the hatreds and the hostilities that break your loving purpose. Heal us, O oh God, that we may live in harmony as one people. Come, Come O oh Lord, Lord, and set us free. Give, give your, your people, people peace. peace. Creating God, you made us in your own image. You made us for peace. 
Grant us the courage and the perseverance to embody your peaceful ways in ourselves and in our relationships with one another. Come, O Lord, and set us free. Give your people peace. Mother in God, you gather the suffering in your loving embrace. Come and dwell with those who have lost loved ones to violence and disease. Comfort us in every affliction. With tenderness, console those who mourn and comfort those in despair. In your compassion and mercy, heal us and restore us to fullness of life. Come, O Lord, and set us free. Give your people peace. Discerning God, you know our hearts, and from you no secrets are hidden. You know the impulse to anger that lies within us and the urge to strike out. Lead us away from anger towards a deeper love. Come, Come O Lord, Lord, and set, set us free. Give, give your, your people, people peace. God of our redemption, our cities, our streets, and our institutions have become places of violence. Let us not be silent. Create in us such a longing for peace that we will not be stopped in our efforts to restore our communities through the hard work of justice. Make us bold in your service to you, O Lord. Come, O Lord, and set us free. Give your people peace. Loving God, you love every person that you have made and call us to do the same. Give us ministering hearts and healing hands. May our lives and the lives of our churches and communities serve according to your will and manifest in that service your all-encompassing compassion and mercy. Come, O oh Lord, and set us free. Give your people peace. Prince of Peace, you challenge us when we seek a shallow justice, when we cry, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Give courage to those who seek your purposes, who challenge and address the truth of our violent ways. Uphold us in our work by your grace, that we may be known as people of peace as lovers of justice. Come, Come O Lord, Lord, and set us free. Give your people peace. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we, we confess, confess that, that we, we have, have sinned, sinned against, against you, <clears throat> opposing your will in our lives. We have, have denied, denied your goodness in each other, in, in ourselves, and, and in, in the, the world, world you have created. created. We, we repent, repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may be alive in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, 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 peace friends. Peace, peace, everybody. So good to see so many folks. Jan, Phil, Bob, 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 Margo, <laughs> Dan, Tracy, Roberta, Steve, so many good people. Frank, Alyssa, such a gift. Wow. Such a gift you all are to each other, to me, to this community. I am so glad you're here. 
Now, in just a moment, um, hopefully we'll have a chance to hear an offertory anthem. <laughs> we'll see what happens there. But you know, it is, it is such an opportunity to show up in our imperfection and in fullness of self and to fully experience what it is to be part of this messy, beautiful, so human thing we call showing up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for showing up anyway and regardless and with great love for each other and for the church and for our call to be Christians in the world. So um, trusting the offertory anthem works. I'll offer an offertory sentence. If you'd like to give financially online, you can do so at stcstp.org. There's a give now option. Um, and if finances are hard right now, know that just showing up in this space is a gift. Um, being part of this community and being willing to give this time to your community is a gift because it wouldn't be the same without you. So that said, walk in love as Christ loves all of us. Mark, would you like yes, me Mark. to take that as a solo? Uh, yeah, please, if you would. Um, oh, good grief. <laughs> anyway, I did my did my darndest. Hang on just one second. I don't know we'll why. We'll give it one more try before we continue we on. Okay. Hang on. We got it now, I believe. Let us give it another chance. <laughs> and if this is the first time you're joining us, please know this is the first time we've had this problem. <laughs> yeah, so, and now it's- Here we are. Hang on. Okay. Uh, let me get back there and we will. No, not that. It is really being stupid. And um, God, uh, uh, Mark, were you doing a little too much praying that God would, would give you opportunities to learn patience? It does seem that way, but I think, fingers crossed, we have it. We continue with a prayer of Eucharistic remembrance. This morning, although prevented by health concerns from gathering around your table, Lord Christ, we proclaim our trust in you and recall your mighty deeds in our behalf. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. And so we give thanks. Almighty God, Father, Father of all mercies, we, we your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness. 
loving, and loving kindness, kindness to, to us. And to us. And to all. We bless you for your, your our creation, creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love. In, in the redemption of the world by, by our, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the, for the means, means of grace and for the hope of your glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, and by giving of ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be we honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. May God give you the grace never to sell yourself short. Mm -hmm. Grace to risk something big for something good. And grace to remember the world is now too dangerous for anything but the truth and too small for anything but love. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Mother and Maker of us all, be upon you this day and always. Amen. Let us go forth, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. What a gift indeed to be with you all. Um, I love those unexpected moments that probably feel awkward um, to all of us, but are also examples of people participating in fullness of self and relishing in those prayers that for many of us are written so deeply within our hearts. Um, that general Thanksgiving from morning prayer is really just uh, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Uh, beautiful, beautiful words. So speaking of beautiful things, I did get a note from a parishioner this week, um, actually from the daughter of a parishioner who gave us a little bit of a spoiler alert um, on Peg Lozen's birthday. So Peg's birthday is coming up. She's going to be 80 and her daughter has asked that we remember her in prayer. So I wanted to make note of that. Also a few things to make note of. Our Global Mission in Haiti campaign begins next week and our co-chair, um, Bert Purrington, is going to be our preacher. Today, we have our annual meeting. We'll be presenting um, the vestry slate and the operating and capital budgets as part of our financial state of the parish. All of those things are posted on our website. So you will need to go there for the agenda, the vestry slate, operating budget and capital budget, as well as annual reports. Later on today, um, over 50 members of St. Clements will be attending the Isaiah virtual launch. Isaiah is a nonprofit that does advocacy for the vulnerable people in our communities in Minnesota. And there is going to be a watch party of St. Clements amongst other folks. And if you would like to be part of that, please reach out to Liz Bryan for the link. It's too late to register, but it is not too late to get a link from Liz Bryan who has um, really been active in Isaiah and um, has helped lead the efforts that have gotten so many folks involved. Now, um, no Zoom coffee hour today because of the annual meeting. After the postlude, we will take a five minute break before reconvening so that folks can move around or reposition themselves if they need to. And um, once again, know that no Zoom coffee hour will be going postlude, five minute break, annual meeting. So go ahead, Nils. Uh -huh. 